Hey guys, so the display I bought for my Raspberry Pi finally arrived. It's been about two months. <laughs> it's taken a while. It cost about £30. This is the uh, listing on AliExpress where I got it from. So you can see that it says it's a 1024 by 600 uh, LCD display. And it also has a sort of touch, a capacitive touch thing on the front there. And it's got a driver board and everything. So we're going to unbox it and figure out if we can make it work without playing with any settings. So I've already opened this just to make sure that everything was in there. Um, it isn't all in there. There is a cable missing, but I've emailed them about that and they've told me they'll send another one. But we're gonna improvise for now. Okay, so in the box we've got some cables to start off with. Uh, this one is a power cable. It's got a little barrel jack on here and it just goes to a five volt supply. Um, I believe the listing said it needed a two amp supply. We're gonna test that. I'm not sure uh, it will definitely need that. It might be that we can turn down the brightness and reduce that need. Uh, so we've got the power cable there. This one is another USB cable, but it has a little uh, sort of Molex type connector on there uh, and a USB on the other end. So I think this is for the touch screen. Again, I'm just doing this video so that you can see what it would be like for anyone else who's not done any kind of research on it at all. Uh, I know the stats of the board, I know how it's meant to work, how it's meant to go together, uh, but no more than that. I don't know if the software's gonna work straight away, we'll see. Uh, again, this one is for the, this will be for the small flat flex from the touch panel going to the board, which I think is this one here. So let's have a look. So yeah, this will be the touch board. We've got uh, this cable here would plug into the matching uh, socket. And then we've got this one that will go to the, the display. I'm not gonna be playing with the touch screen though, so we'll put those out of the way. I just wanna know whether it works or not. Um, this is the driver board. Oh, I'm gonna cut this out. That was a bit of a snug fit in there. Um, so this is our driver board. You can see we've got uh, HDMI there, we've got the RCA in, and we've also got VGA, which is really useful. So there's lots of options to connect to this. I say lots, there are three. Um, possibly more actually, we've got some more connectors on the board we don't have cables for, and certainly no information as to what they are. So looking on the back of the board, um, it is labeled, and um, the top here appears to be a way of interfacing with the display. Um, we've got various markings on here for LA3, LBO, LBO plus, LBO minus. So I think that's, that's a way of driving the display just through, um, through another cable. Uh, however, on the other side here, we have ground, we've got 12 volts, uh, we've got on off, so there might be a way of attaching an on off button to this, uh, not connected there. And then we've got IR, VCC, ground, IR, so do we have infrared on here? I can't see a sensor, um, but possibly there is a, a way to attach one to it. Or maybe the board is just developed so that there are different versions, I'm not sure. Inside the same little bag, there is a little button PCB. So it's got some buttons on here and an LED, which is labeled as IR actually. So possibly that's, it doesn't look like an infrared receiver to me. It may be that up here there's meant to be an infrared receiver, I'm not sure. Uh, but this is the cable I'm missing. So I'm missing that little cable that's connecting the buttons to the board here. So we're gonna improvise with some other cables, I think. But these buttons will be used for the menu system. Let's move all this stuff out of the way. And then, I didn't notice that. We've got a CD. Um, I'm gonna try and not use that. I'll have a look what it's on it later on, but uh, I will avoid putting that into a machine and um, loading up any drivers. And this is the screen itself. How are we going to get into here? We're going to just pull it out. There we go. So this is our screen. It's quite well packaged, actually. It's a nice box that it came in. It certainly wasn't damaged. And then we have our display. So this is the front of the display. You can see it's kind of got this uh, plastic front on it and lines around the outside. This is our touch 
enabled sort of capacitive overlay. And then on the back we've got uh, a tape down bit for the, that's the, the touch interface, and this is the main cable for the display. Now I already know how this goes in, because you can see where the contacts are on this board. So if we flip this over, the contacts are on the top row here, so we want to be able to push this in. Now these little flat flex things, let's see if I can focus better. So if I turn this over, the way this connects to the board is by popping out these little pins or these little connector bits there. So you see these little black bits, you just push them out and then we should be able to slide in our cable. So you just slide it over the top of the black and underneath the white bit. It doesn't need to go all that far in. Just a little bit of a push. Gotta be careful with these flat flexes. And then to lock it in place, to firmly crimp it on, you just push those in. And if I give it a little bit of a pull, you can see that that's attached. Now, what we need to do is get the power into that. So I'm gonna try it out on the same power supply as the Raspberry Pi for now, we'll see what happens. It can only fail gracefully, hopefully. So we'll just plug in power. Pop that over there. And then we've got our Raspberry Pi here. And I've got a HDMI cable as well. So let's power this up first and see if we get anything on the display. Multimeter to the rescue. So when we power on the board, it automatically goes to HDMI, that will be its default. And then we get no signal because we haven't plugged in HDMI in yet. So let's get the Raspberry Pi, and then it's gone off. I'm not sure if it's gonna come back on again, we'll see. Let's get the Raspberry Pi going. So I'm gonna power up the Raspberry Pi now, so we'll see what the display does. Uh, I should just point out, I've got stock Raspbian on here. Um, well, pretty much, I've just added um, the uh, type VNC on there so that I can, uh, remote into it. You can also do uh, remote SSH just bog standardly. I just like to use the GUI. So let's see what happens. Right, so you'll see we're powered on uh, and it's providing enough power to run the Raspberry Pi and the display at the moment. And there we go, we've got the display working. It's not very bright. Uh, I don't know whether if we attach the buttons it will make it brighter. So let's see what we have. It's kind of difficult to see, isn't it? But I can tell you what I can see. Let's try and zoom in. So this is what's happened. Um, we've got the display working. I mean, it works out of the box. The touch isn't connected, obviously. And we've got um, our display showing up. It's a little bit stretched. Now that will be the standard settings that are on the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm gonna do now is hook up these buttons and go and see if I can't change these settings to make it look a bit better. Right, so I've done a bit of Googling and hopefully we are about to fix it. I say that, I really, I really hope that's the case. So I looked at some listings from some other sellers for the same screen and they came up with um, some sort of config settings that you can use. Now most of their stuff is, is commented out. I'll put a link in the description where you can find that file or I can just post up mine if it works. So let's find out. Yeah, they have specified HDMI mode 87 and one. That's odd, isn't it? Well, we're gonna save it and see what happens. If it breaks it, then I'll just re-image or I'll, uh, I'll edit it via SSH. So saved. Let's get out of there. I had to use um, leaf pad there because I couldn't read the console. So let's reboot and see what happens. So again, we're not using the whole screen there for the recovery. I don't know if you normally do. The console's picked up the entire screen, which is great. That's a lot more readable now. And there we go, isn't that brilliant? 
Well, I'm very happy with that. So we have the entire screen to play with now. There is a little bit of a black bar at the bottom there. I'm not going to worry about it too much. That's a nice area. Right. The bit that, um, that didn't work was these buttons. So I've brought a load of female to female cables over. If I have a look at the back of the driver board. So we've got the top one there is um, VCC. And luckily these are marked on here. So I'm gonna pop these together and we'll see if we can get it to work. Unfortunately, I can't put this together with these uh, female to female jumpers because they just don't fit. These are too tightly, too tightly close to, too tightly. They're too close together. So um, unfortunately, I'm gonna to need to get the cable off, um, off the cellar or buy a new one and try and find one with the right pitch. Now the screen doesn't appear to have uh, audio out on this board, so I don't know whether you can connect it uh, to get audio out. However, I'm working on a, a sort of a USB DAC with an amplifier built in, so I'll be using that with my Pi. And this is gonna become a little retro Pi, so we're gonna look at doing some sort of arcade gaming and potentially print a little box for it to go in. So I'm very excited. For 30 quid, this is quite a nice display if you can get the touch screen working, because I know it doesn't work out the box, then I'm sure this would be a really nice little interface to have for your Raspberry Pi. You could almost do away with the keyboard and mouse. At this brightness level, which is probably the lowest, or it's certainly not the highest, it might be at 50% as a default, the screen is drawing 400 milliamps, so not an awful lot. So the two amp um, USB power supply that I've got is perfectly capable of running the Raspberry Pi and the screen at the same time. If you were to push up the brightness, then you might need that amp or two amps as the listing seem to suggest on the one that I looked at, but I think they're varying across the different listings. I think it probably is more closer to one amp. Then you might actually need that two amp supply, maybe even larger, depending on what other devices you're gonna to attach to your Raspberry Pi. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Um, and if you liked it, give us a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you in the next video.